session sponsored by Sedulary Physicians and Technologies. For this, I would like to call upon Dr. Anup Ghirkar, CEO, Founder, Sedulary Physicians and Technologies, Editor-in-Chief, Cyber Times Newspaper, Editor-in-Chief, Cyber Times International Journal of Technology and Management, Cyber Time Investigator and Cyber Security Consultant, over 18 years of experience, to please sir, come up on stage and raise the audience. Very good evening to all of you. Uh, let's cut the crap. Let's hack. I think that is what the title is. Uh, first of all, I really thanks to all of you for listening and to contribute your papers and all for the conference. But let's just press uh, is some that you press to the conference. That's why we try to give a, a, an organization workshop on ethical hacking. Obviously, we have to try to target more ethical level hacking. It's always there, right? And let's see how to hack. What are the content? Uh, I have to see the other uh, dependencies. But in case that the dependencies suits, today I'm very going to hack lots of things in front of you. That is what we targeted. But again, uh, as a uh, of time, I think we'll cover a little less for the same. Right? So, shall we start? Okay, before starting the session, generally I used to ask uh, three questions. And my first three questions is how many of you have uh, email IDs like Yahoo, Red, uh, Red F, Gmail? Can I see the hand, please? Great. Stop using it. Stop using it if you don't know what are the loopholes, what are the problems you will not face by using these mail IDs. Reason? There are lots of vulnerabilities by which you can simply go and hack anyone's mail ID. To be very honest, I think I have a couple of videos with me that without using your passwords, anyone can misuse your mail ID and drop the mail to anyone else. So just I need your mail ID. So your mail ID is okay. It's already I think planted on your business cards and other information, and I think publicly on social network sites it's already available. So the moment you just I'll get your mail ID. And on the base of mail ID, anyone can generate the mail from anyone's ID to anyone else. A uh, part of that, yes, investigation process is there, where we can find out, and uh, there are lots of issues even in investigations. A part of this, how many of you are on specially uh, Google? Can I see the hands, please? Google. I think all, uh, especially in IT, if I talk about, uh, we people, whenever we have to check whether the internet is working or not, so our first job is to open the Google, and if that page occurs, then we'll feel that yes, the Google is working. In other way, we are doing Google I know how, I would say. Right. So stop using Google. Stop using Google because you don't know what are all the problems, what are all the actual reasons why Google is coming up into the picture, and now it's being actually, you know, uh, de deployed, deployed in our blood. The moment. We have to start communicating. We are actually on Google. Major portals, all successful portals like YouTube, Blogspot, Google Search Engine, Mailing, and many other portals which are coming because of Google. And we are really working onto that. Great performance, great activity, but certain things. Why Google is all free? Have you ever realized what kind of problems you're going to face? Once you are really using Google, okay, I'll give you one small uh, tip. Have you seen the moment you open the Google toolbar and you might uh, see, you just go and write on the URL that google.com and it actually redirects to google.co.in? Yes, sir. What does it mean? It means that Google is having a tracing and monitoring concept at their end. They detect your IP address and because you are surfing from India, they redirect your request to google.co.in. So it means, first of all, they trace your IP, they check the job risk locations, and according to the job risk locations, the, the outcome, whatever they have to deliver you, that will be actually redirected, uh, redirected to one of the uh, subdomain of Google, that is google.co.in. And the best part, not in co.in, I think in Russia, it's uh, are you? google.co.in or what? Uh, Yuri, what do you feel? Uh, in Russia, what is the Google's URL? R oh, okay, okay, great. So, what does it mean? It means Google is trying to deliver the content accordingly. And the best part, now whatever the keywords you are going to pass on Google, say alpha, 
about digital solutions and technologies. Or in other ways, say, I want to find, can I have a weapon like AK-47? And simply, if I go and write, okay, okay, uh, something is there, right? So, if I go and write on Google that I want to find a weapon like AK-47, the moment I click, obviously I'm going to get some outcomes, okay. some hits, some links. The moment I click to the link, obviously I'm going to the get the list of the suppliers who can provide me the weapons like AK-47. Right, but obviously in India they're going to ask you for the legalities the moment you approach to them. They'll ask you come and give me the license and all on legal aspects are there. But suppose if I do the same thing and if I went to first of all I have to go to the Taliban, the moment I get to the go to the Taliban and again I'm over the Google, do you really believe that you're going to get again if you write Google.com, you'll get Google.org over there? No, it means you'll get their local right uh, uh, local domains of Google. And again, if you're right, AK-47, do you really believe the output is same? No. The index? No. Again, it's different. Right. In fact, in Taliban, I believe, no need to do Google for AK-47. You just go to nearest virtual Nora and ask for a grid and ask for an AK-47, you can go. Right. So it depends as per the country to country. And this, this is a small data mining which we generally used to do on Google. Even we have a couple of things. If you really want to make a fool to Google, I have a small video. I'll give you a certain tips by which you can even make a fool to Google. So no need to go to Russia, no need to go to even US, UK, or Taliban. So wherever you want to go and you want to search what is going actually in those countries, just you need to follow certain things. Make fool to Google, get into the Google, and try to grab whatever the content you want. Not only this, how many of you use mobile phones? I just like sure. Can I see the hand for using mobile phones? Great. Everybody, stop using it. <laughs> stop using it. If you don't know what are the loopholes, what are the problems you're going to face at the time once you're using mobile phones. Ah, uh, cut the crap. Why not I hack one of your mobile phones? Do you want to see? Sure. Why not? Right? I I want then uh, one uh, volunteer. Who is ready to compromise their mobile phones? Then I'll show you something live. Sure. Oh, please come. Uh,
Yeah, I got one session. See, it means my client. See, this is what I got on the client side. That's it. Not more than that. Right. Only what I did, I requested to the client, please go and listen to that link. The moment you click to that link on the browser, something happened on the packet on my server. And at this point of time, I got one session. The session which is connected. Now, <coughs> sessions minus I say I'll select the host session. So it is, I'm just trying to start this session and I'm trying to connect with the client's machine like XP. Done. Great. So only I need to use the privileges. Loaded. Great. Now I'm going to pass one command like hash dump. Uh, okay. Hash dump. See, I just passed one hash dump. Can you imagine? See, I got the email, uh, the user, like administrator, guest. These are all are the Windows XP usernames with their passwords. So I got the entire list. Not only this, let me do something more. Say there is one command called shell. See, the moment I click to the shell, the best part, I got a prompt. The desktop prompt, the prompt of my client. So simply, my machine is now connected with the client. Right. I can now do any damn thing. Say, why not I create CD hack. Hack it. Uh, okay, I'll create first drive. M K D I R C C hack it. Done. So it means the moment I go back. I've seen this is one folder called Hackett. Great. It means now on the back end, I can control your computer without any permission. Not only this, uh, let me create one file. So I'll go to CD Hackett. Okay, fine. Say what I'll do. Echo. Say. Uh, your system got hacked. Say I wrote something like this and uh, say I'll redirect to hack.txt. Great. Let me see if I'll go to hack it. One file is there hack.txt and the message is your system got hacked. So it means I can control your files, I can control your folders, I can do whatever I need to do at this point of time. <coughs> and have you seen the blue screens generally in Windows? Some dump blue screen memory dumps happen. Let me just try if possible I can hack this computer. Uh, let me crash this computer now. Let me crash this client if I want. Uh, exit. Okay. Uh, there's a command for PS. Say I want to test how many applications are running. This is the task list process, the process which are running. So I have one process ID 680. Okay. Say bye to the client. Kill 680. Have you seen the blue screen? And XP is crashed. No XP there. So whenever you are connected to a network and sometimes you are getting the blue screens, try to check might be your system was already vulnerable and somewhere might be controlled by some other people.